Hello and welcome to Literary Life. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my book reviews on three books that were part of the literary journey, thrillers with police protagonists. So our main characters, our narrators are going to be various levels and types of police officers who are really taking us through the thriller adventure. Now, the way my book reviews work is I give every book one to five stars. One star, I did not like the book, probably didn't even finish reading it. Two stars, nah, the book was okay. Three stars, good book, I liked it, and I would recommend it to some people. Four stars, it was a great book, I loved it, and I'm gonna recommend it to a lot of people. And five stars are those more random books that just absolutely blow my mind, and I do want everyone to read them. All right, so let's get started. Um, as always, I do have links below if you are interested in purchasing any of the books, and hit that subscribe button and join us if you are a fan of reading or just hearing about books. Okay, first book. This was a good book, and I ended up going on three stars for it. So Bluebird, Bluebird by Ada Kalak is going to be set in Texas. And our main character, the police protagonist, is a Texas Ranger. He has a lot going on. Um, he has a tremendous amount of backstory and history that has put him in a position in his life and professional career where things are kind of on the cusp of falling apart. Um, and that is going to be critical to how he proceeds through the story. So he basically is going to, in the midst of everything he's dealing with in his personal life, he's gonna get pulled into a small town double murder, double homicide. The homicide victims are going to be an African-American male who is, it, they occurred in a very rural small town in Texas. And the male is from the Chicago area or Chicago itself. Um, and then a, a white Caucasian female who is from the town where the murders occurred. He is going to come to the town to investigate and get caught up in a lot of things that are happening in, in the town. Um, I found the book to be engaging. Um, there is a lot going on with obviously racial tensions. There's um, references to um, white supremacist groups that are active in the town. Um, I did find that some of the information, I was so floored by what I was reading. Um, any extremist group I think is very interesting, but I did find that some of the information when I was looking it up to say, wow, is this actually true, was not. So I just want to flag for people, even though there are some nonfiction um, groups that are cited in here, some of their initiation practices, for example, are definitely fictionalized for the purpose of this story. Um, and then... There's going to be a ton having to do with, um, not outside of race, with socioeconomic status um, and just being in a position of privilege within the town. It was definitely a really good book. I just um, felt like it was good. It was a good read. Um, I didn't love it. It didn't blow my mind or anything like that. So why not? Um, I thought the plot was well-developed. The characters were moderately well-developed, but I did find myself frustrated with the main character and a lot of his behaviors. And some of it I found, and I, I could, I almost wonder because we know that there's a lot of things that people can get away with, but at some points I found myself struggling. Like, would this really play out this way? There's multiple government agencies um, that are involved. And I just felt sometimes like things were evolving in a way to propel the story forward versus it being more like embedded in reality and propelling the story forward, if that makes sense. And it was kind of those nuances where I'm like, yeah, it's a good, it's a really good story, but it, I didn't love it. It wasn't great. I would, though, highly recommend this. If you are a fan of like mysteries, um, thrillers, detective novels um, that deal with anything outside of just murder and like a serial killer, if you want to get into some of those social elements like race and power and poverty um, versus the wealthy, this is a good one for you. Um, if you're already an Attica Lock fan, I have not read any of her other books, but I did find her writing intriguing. So if you have recommendations, do pop them to me below in the comments. Um, but definitely put this one on your radar if you are, like I said, a um, detective kind of mystery thriller fan. Okay, next book. Love this book. This was four stars. When the Stars Go Dark by Paula McLean. Um, so in this book, essentially, our main character, our police protagonist, is a detective that investigates missing persons, and she originates 
um, well, her professional life is in San Francisco. She has had a personal tragedy as well. So I think it's very interesting so far. You know, both the books are kind of housed with these protagonists who have experienced um, a recent event that has really shaken them. Um, but her event um, has driven her to walk away from her career for a period and return to a northern California town in which she grew up. Our main character was in foster care. So we are going to get to learn as we read the book a lot about her backstory um, and her experience with these uh, wonderful foster parents she eventually meets. I absolutely, absolutely adored the characters in this story. Um, and essentially, as she goes back to that town, we'll learn through the memories about them and about that history. Then we're going to meet some of the people in the town as well. The current chief of police, who you, she used to know. There are a handful of other people that um, she knew very well from the time she lived there. And uh, we're going to learn a lot about not just what the town and these people were like when she was there growing up, but how things have evolved and changed over time. Um, when she returns there, she basically goes to kind of, like I said, step out of her career and just kind of get a cabin in the woods and just be by herself and heal, essentially. And a, a teenage girl is going to go missing. And this is going to um, basically remind her of the work she does and she's going to get pulled into it. I love the characters in this book. Um, they are very flawed, just as they were, you know, in the first book. Um, there was something about the way that they were flawed yet behaved in this book that I felt it was just a little bit more realistic. Um, so I wasn't distracted, essentially. I found myself just completely riding along with it versus kind of distracted by questions and doubts and really kind of moments. Um, this book hooked me instantly. I, from the very first page, I think I loved this author's writing style. I thought all the main characters were extremely complex, as I noted, and well-developed. There were so many different elements woven into the thriller, and the thriller is really a backstory. There is a tremendous amount that is going on in this book, and I found that to be really engaging. Several of the relationships in this book are incredibly powerful. Um, and I really enjoyed that piece of it. And then on top of all of it, there would just be these nuggets throughout the book, just these beautiful moments or insights th that the author would bring out either directly through the character's thoughts or just in the way a moment was written that I find I found just absolutely um, beautiful and added a lot of value to the reading of this book for me. So When the Stars Go Dark by Paula McLean, four-star read. I would highly, highly recommend this to people that do enjoy thrillers, mysteries, um, you know, missing persons type of cases. Um, but also if you're looking for something similar to the prior book where you've got a little bit more um, dynamics woven into that, you know, where you've got these um, relationships, this history, um, very powerful, very powerful read. Um, I do want to highlight put some potential trigger warnings in this particular book um, due to, um, I don't want to spoil anything. Um, if you want to message me, feel free to, because I, uh, I don't, it's not, I, this is a spoiler-free review. Um, so I just want to highlight that. Um, so just be aware that this I mean, I think a lot of thrillers are difficult reads because you have violence, you know, usually in them. Um, so this that may not be a surprise. But that one I did find particularly difficult for me um, to read. Okay, last book, guys. Wow. This book has been setting, I think I got this from Page One Books like ages ago, and I finally got to read it, and this blew me away. It was a five-star read. We Begin at the End by Chris Whitaker. Um, this book is going to center on a 40-some-year-old chief of police named, I think it's Walker, Walk. And Walk essentially lives in this coastal California town where he grew up, and he is now the chief of police, as I noted, in this very small town. He There's quite a history that's gone on. Um, again, we've got a group of people that have a history together, have known each other for um, decades, and we're going to really get a feel for both their backstory and where they are 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 all now in the present time. 
interestingly enough, this one was really surprisingly well done because Walk is going to have a unique friendship with a 13 year old girl. And it's, you know, I call it friendship, but it is sort of a very, not quite father daughter, but definitely a protector um, kind of role he will play. And the 13 year old girl is called Star. She has a younger brother and her mother. Um, and and actually, the 13-year-old girl is Duchess. I just knew I said that wrong. Star is her mother. Um, so Star is going to have be of the same age of, as Walk. They're going to have the history together, growing up together, being teenagers, all hanging out in the same group. Um, Star has had quite a quite a life. Um, she, she is a single mom uh, with these two children that she is actually rather neglectful of. And um, she does have some substance abuse issues as well as some abusive relationships with the men she does bring into the home. Um, so there is a tremendous amount going on that our other main character, Duchess, is exposed to. We are going to vacillate between Walk's point of view and Duchess's point of view, and, I, and some others, I think, even briefly. And I really loved that as well. I thought it added a lot of richness and context to the story. What's going to happen that's really going to move things along in this particular book um, is that there is another uh, character that is from Walk and Star's time age called Vincent and Vincent is has been incarcerated he was Walk's best friend and Walk actually testified against him which contributed to Vincent being incarcerated and Walk has a tremendous amount of I think guilt around this um Vincent is now being released from jail he served his time is being released and this is going to really set off a lot of tensions in the community so we're going to get to meet Vincent we're going to see his return to the community and we're going to see how a lot of tensions, a lot of backstory are going to come to a head. And it's all going to be embedded. It's going to be like the past stories and resolve things from the past playing out in the present um, in this current setting of Duchess's experience being the child of Star and being um, having this pseudo friendship, protective caregiver with Walk. And everything is going to come to a head. But I'm going to tell you that that even feels oversimplified. There is so much depth to how the story was pulled together that is going on with the characters that it is incredibly mind-blowing for me. Um, I found myself just completely wrapped up in each of the characters' lives in the story as it was moving forward. I did not want to put the book down. And then through the end of the story, I mean, it was goosebumps. I was ready to cry. It was just, there was just so, so much. And it was done so realistically, so incredibly well. I just was absolutely blown, blown away. Um, I love the fact all the characters, as I noted, were flawed. Um, but they're really trying to cope with the circumstances as the best they can. And again, it was done in like a very realistic way where I didn't find myself having like doubt. Um, there was a ton of tragedy, but you're going to see as you're reading the book that you're going to feel like that tragedy, but it's going to be interwoven with compassion, with love, with hope. And that's what made this book incredibly rich for me. Um, like I told you before, it broke my heart many times, but the joy that you feel as the reader at seeing the character's courage as they're moving through what they're moving through um, and their perseverance perseverance just really balanced out um, that brokenhearted experience. So I, my emotions were all over the place. And anytime a book can do that, it, it, it puts it very likely into a five star. And the writing was phenomenal. This is definitely one I'm going to read again. Um, with all the books out there, all the books sitting in this office waiting for me to read. I, I don't very often leave a book saying, I want to read this one again because I'm always thinking about all the other ones out there. This is one I would read again and probably again and again. Um, so that is it for these book reviews. As always, if you've read any of these books or you plan to, let me know below. And if you have any recommendations for me, even though I have a backlog, I'm still taking them. <laughs> putting them on my to, to be our list. So bring them on. But as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part of my literary life. Now let's go read some books. Happy reading.